Welcome, 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 dear all, to twitch.tv slash Wensleydale Cheddar. This is Samus Ream, Manga Podcast, and Speech Therapy combined. And apparently I'm not in Krakow at the moment. Oh, which, which is, uh, um, I, I, was, I was thinking that, um, that uh, may, maybe it was Brandish that, uh, that um, uh, re- uh, redecorated everything uh, that uh, for some reason be, people drive on the left side of the road or whatever uh, but no it turns out I'm in London how did that happen I don't know uh, you must you, I mean you must have just woken up one day and just been in the wrong city yeah uh, yo ho, or, or there is a possibility yo ho ho he took a bite of gum gum that as well in any case I'm your summering host um, um, wait what was my name again? Uh, right Winsley Dale Cheddar here alongside your non stammering host. Hoven, I'm Hoven with an H. Dr. Hoven. Also, the, there's Dr. Nova, uh, another doctor, um, uh, another um, engineer, I suppose, uh, Grail9. I, I, don't, I don't know what uh, what exactly is your... Uh, title. Uh, title. Uh, master, en- master engineer, I presume. <sighs> Well, I mean, I do have a doctorate in both evil engineering and evil sciences, so yeah, and, uh, either uh, one will do. Uh, by by the way, I am disappointed with you, Grail. I presume that uh, that you, you would uh, um, you would be the first one to to meet me and uh, and shoot me on the spot. Uh, wrong country. I'm not even a fucking doctor. I'm going to cooking school. Uh, and, and well, I mean, we... publicly, I'm no doctor either, but, you know, you usually don't write your resume, evil mastermind, who's got to take you over. <laughs> Wait, you don't? Shit, that's been my issue so far. Yeah, I learned that, and right after that, I got a job cook- for cooking stuff. Well, baking stuff, but either way. And we, and we also have our very own Casta UK, who... Was going to be here with us, but we have uh, we had some technical difficulties, so he's in the other room, just uh, just recording yeah, on his own. We had some technical difficulties, we ha- like we could... eating, eating a whole bucket of rusty nails has some med- some negative health effects. Uh, I mean, I the thing is, we can't really do an impression of him because it's obviously just going to be us because we're on video. So, unless Gray or Nova wants to attempt it. Well, I mean, it didn't stop you when you read my stuff of my revelations about Black Clover. <laughs> you see, mine, mine's just going to be horribly offensive, so... <laughs> I'm just not a good imitator, so I'm not going to try. It's all right, the Brits can take it. Hello, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like when Chris and Nick all that. do what? infamous... Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, I can't be bothered, I ain't who's up! Um, yeah. So, this, since this we're already so much later than we should be, should we get right into talking about manga? Yeah, absolutely. So, right, uh, shall we do One Piece, uh, chapter 800, uh, 893. So, so, guys, first of all, going Uzov. Going Uzov. Uzov is back, guys. Oh, in my version it reads... The Uso Land. Uh, I, and I, I, I do I, love okay, their... I'm, I'm the Uso call... Land pirate ship. <laughs> yeah. I do love their headpiece, which is, you know, the Uso face from ha- his special shot. Except without the curly eyes. Yeah, and, Come and, on, Tantana. You gotta have some attention to detail. And uh, I guess it wouldn't be aerodynamic. Uh, uh, I don't know. Any, anyway, yeah. uh, I love uh, I love a few details uh, like the fact that uh, his uh, his tongue is um, uh, is a cannon, <laughs> which is great. no, it's like a flintlock pistol because they cut the, the cannon's oh, too big. Right, right. <laughs> oh yeah, they've just put a little flintlock pistol in there. Uh, the That's lady... not gonna help them a lot in ship combat. Yeah, but they do have a a bit of a miniature ship, though it's still it's still larger than regular humans, though. So yeah. Uh, but, but, but yeah, they, um, uh, I do like the detail on the Jolly Roger, uh, which is, uh, which is kind of the, um, Uza Pirates Jolly Roger, uh, like the, um, the three boys that, uh, that followed him, um, in his village, but, uh, but with, um, um, but, but with a Mont, Mont Blanc, uh, kind of chestnut. Oh, yeah. Uh, hat that, that, that Uza wore. So, yeah. 
And, then, and in any case, what did you think about this chapter? Mixed. It was so, um, yeah. okay. Not really setting my soul on fire or anything. I like this one quite a bit personally because I, I haven't been a big fan of the constant the constant cutting in between that One Piece does so well. Yeah, I I was in very much like how the Kuri fight cut back to like Sanji and friends still being chased by Big Mom and friends. Big Mom sip. It's been a little monotonous, especially with like just repeatedly introducing this new children of Big Mom that haven't really done anything yet. Like I don't know who like sisters who are also like specifically the smoothie. Like yeah, I'm not that... sure they're going to do anything. I'm pretty sure that. But that, this I like. This just really just focused on the fight and, for and, a little and, while. We just don't give a shit. Flu chapter than just back. Not to mention, Katakuri is pretty damn badass when he just just so he could have a, a chill, drilling fight rather than easy win. Yeah, he, he, um, he's been excellent this arc. Yeah, uh, I'm conflicted about about that moment because uh, on the, on the one hand, I um. Also, it's, it's so what do you think, Katakuri with or without? Which one's better looking? The scarf. With the scarf. I just... <laughs> and it's the mouth. I just love the scarf. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit to do with mouth. He doesn't look too bad with that, but the scarf really was something that gave him a unique look. A Wednesday. Not his eyes looked all the more menacing without his mouth showing. I'm conflicted, because on one hand, it's... Uh, it's... Your mic work? Hello? Can you hear us? Well, yeah. OBS can, can hear us, so so that's important. So did we lose him again? I I, I reckon we did. Yes. <laughs> can you hear me now? Bam! Oh well. And we're, um, and we're recording, so it's lovely. Uh, distraction! Uh, distraction! I'm distracting you with a dance number that you can't yeah, see cause I don't weird, have no camera. Here, but, but, uh, but now, but now the singing. Yeah. Um, hey, we can hear you. Okay, now you can hear us. Yeah, just trying to distract them while oh, waiting. Right. Okay, uh, I actually OB OBS was picking us up, so so um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I've been trying to say something for a while now. Uh, so, in any case, it's uh, nice to see some more depth from Katakuri, as it's surprisingly rare that we get an enemy to Luffy who just want to fight, uh, wants to fight him because they respect him as a fighter. But, um, on the other hand, I, um, I don't really see the point of Flambe now. She, 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 for me, she just disrupts the flow of the fight a lot, and it's a fight that we've had going for so long now. I don't really um, get what she's supposed to represent, but because uh, because she's just a plot device to drive forth how badass Katakuri is, because there had to be some outside interruption. Yeah, but th did there really have to be? Uh, it, no. It, 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 she just she she just feels like a character who just got introduced to, to make Katakuri look better, and it it kind of feels manipulative to me. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I know we talked about this, but. Um, but it still still feels that way to me. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, well, it is true. She was introduced only to make Katakuri look better. Pointless, because there's nothing, like, in this arc that hasn't already been, like, building up to how good Katakuri already is. You didn't really need other... come in and sort of say how awesome this guy is, because for the most part, the manga's been doing that fine on its own. Yeah, I guess they need something to build up to Karakuri actually respecting Luffy since otherwise all fight he's been just saying, you are inferior to me, you shit. Just give up, stay down. Yeah. I love it. I love how you were browsing through Seraph of the End, Milo. <laughs> I was just trying to get to the contents page. <laughs> um. uh, uh, so, uh, and once again we have, we have kind of a 
neat parallel, but but the first time it it was introduced, it, it annoyed me. So it it kind of annoys me as well now. That uh, uh, the the two weird tropes that, that always confuse me in One Piece that, that uh, we have a person who is otherwise attractive and but has just one blemish that makes them look ugly, uh, and uh, and they seem ugly to genuine gonks. So. Uh, we have the same thing with pudding. Uh, it annoyed me then, and uh, it, it, kind of, it kind of annoys me now, because... I think this one makes me annoy the pudding thing less, because at least it's internally consistent, and it's not just singling out that. And it's maybe they're making a point that it's just... Uh, the Big Mom crew have really oddly specific hang-ups about appearance. That could just be the point it's trying to make. I don't... Though I don't... I don't really... Well, I, I guess appearance w was was a big part uh, was a big part of uh, Katakuri's character. So, I, I could maybe see uh, see the seed of a good idea here. But but mm. I um, I don't see how um, I don't see how fighting with Luffy m would make uh, um, would make him discard that appearance. Uh, uh, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. <coughs> I'm, um, I don't think is, is that confrontation important enough uh, uh, for him to to just to just take that away from him. Uh, I I guess uh, yeah I, I guess I guess he was he was just annoyed that uh, that um, that he wasn't being given a fair fight due to Flambe but but ah. yeah I'm pretty sure it's less about about he, about the fight with Luffy and more about this little shit sh trying to interrupt my fight, even though it's the best fight I've had in a long time. So, ju just because of her, he, he discards his appearance uh, he's been building for, for a long time now, and uh, has even hidden uh, hidden his eating habits b because of that. I, uh, w when you put when you put these things together, it ju it just doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, uh... I think the fighter's pride makes it work. Hey, um, the idea that he's so into, hey, the idea that he's so into this fight, the idea that it was taken from him because Flambe inter intervened, being like, "No, I want this fight more than I want your affection. This is me." Mm. So yeah, another another little thing that annoyed me uh, is yeah. Oda needing to put another shut up woman. Uh, this is a fight between men kind of speech uh, in another big arc. Yeah, yeah two. Uh, so, I'm uh, not sure there are too many of those. Only one I can remember right now was with Senor Pink and Frankie. It just that is the last big arc we had before this one. Yeah, so so, so it's it just like it feels like yeah. a trend. Yeah, but still, it's been like uh, how many chapters yeah. since then? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Also. That was the joke in that fight. The idea that they were they were camping this up to be a fight between men so much. Their next their next attacks against each other were baby diaper bombs and nipple flashlights. Whereas this one, it's um, ice. This one isn't really about men and women. This is just about stop getting in the way of my fight, you um, person who's less less than me. Not because she's a woman, but because she's just very petty. Bubblegum person and fuck those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's another part of the Charlotte family really, really judgmental body image thing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's just people. my head canon now that uh, that uh, category is is just incredibly racist against some types of sweets. Apparently. All right. All right. Shall we move on to food wars, or do we have anything else to say? Nothing else except that I checked, and that that part you said took place at least a hundred and twenty chapters earlier. So okay. it's been over two years. So I don't think you can say it's another one of those. Food Wars chapter two hundred and twenty uh, two hundred and forty nine. So, uh, what did you think about this chapter? It had very little impact on me. Same I literally me, like... forgot to read it. Yeah. 
I read the next chapter. It had a good. Read it, but not read it. Yeah, the chapter had some good ideas, but the fact that this fight is so foregone conclusion that I just can't get invested into any of it. No one thinks for a second that Tsukasa's going to lose this one. Oh no, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm so invested, guys. This is uh, this is totally exhilarating. Also, just yeah. the problem with having this sort of at match where the very overpowered villain or, or rival ob is obviously going to win is that it doesn't work quite as well in a sports series or cook-off match scenario as it does in a fight series because in a fight series you could either set up an interest you can set up an interesting arc in how they're defeated or you can have that so that they lay the groundwork which they kind of tried to do with the last match but it didn't really work or um, at least they push the bad guy far enough that they have to use some yet unseen power as opposed to this i'm just like what's he gonna do he's using chicken uh, I guess, but yeah. guys it's, it's shiki it filled the dumpling with me so case if, if this really was a team show kageki if uh, if everyone if you could show everyone working as a team uh, in, instead I mean, of like, just uh, inventing uh, inventing uh, different dishes the thing is, i think that the conclusion they're going to eventually go for is just soma versus um Tsukasa. and i think what would be way more interesting if it was soma and erina tag team match against rindo and Tsukasa, and they have to prepare one single dish between them each i'm expecting that one actually that sounds interesting yeah i all i always expect that er after you know last few rounds where I started to see how the cards fell down, that Erina and Soma would be the last two. I wasn't sure if they would like do a do a combination finish or if one of them only survived the last round. I, th I think ju <sighs> just uh, having a parallel for, from other other sports manga. Um, one I one I enjoy is Haikyuu, where uh, where. Uh, every single every single chapter, the, the things have been getting so exciting lately. Uh, every um, every um, every every little game we have um, different characters uh, showing how they're useful in d different circumstances. Um, uh, mean meanwhile, I I don't. Uh, I don't really enjoy low robotics laser beam all that much, uh, and uh, uh, may maybe this is just because it's too individualistic. Maybe maybe um, it's because the there isn't this element of the team. Yeah, I mean, like that, that's yeah, the and thing. I'll Batman even Gaka... say that. Hmm? Yeah, you go first. I mean, Batman Gaka does really focus on that stuff. Like there was a bit more of a team element in Kuroko, but. It was still very much about look how the aces of each team have these super amazing powers, whereas Haikyuu is very much it's much more team focused, even just from what I've seen. Yeah, but um, um, uh, and even that would mostly be because bas basketball is uh, is much more of a team <laughs> team sport. Uh, yeah, you kind than, of have to golf. have some level of teamwork involved. I yeah. mean, literally, like it is ba the whole thing is based around the main duo of how they work off each other. It's like one of them. Can, you know, is barely a presence on the field, so kind of acts like a stealth player, and the other is just a powerhouse. Um, yeah, and I was gonna say that even this particular setup was done way better earlier when it was Kuga going against Tsukasa, because at that point, building it up, even involving another character from the team, where you still knew that Tsukasa wasn't gonna lose right away, but it planted that tiny seed of doubt into your mind. Yeah, I would happen. Yeah. Also, Here, it's, it's just done it's way, it's way too boring. quick uh, and I mean, with way uh, too little uh, emphasis uh, on it, so you'd keep. never think that Tsukasa would lose. Yeah, yeah. bit of a side note, but um, I like... Alice looks like she's enjoying herself on that uh, that cover page. <laughs> yeah. No, so, I, so, I, so, so, is, so is Ishiki, to be honest. Oh yeah, he's just chilling on the shoulder, just like, yup. I'm just chilling on your shoulder, naked. <sighs> no, he probably still has his loin cloth. Uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, of all people, yeah, no, he would not have his loin so, cloth. Um, apart from like the the conclusion of the match, what do people think about the stuff involving uh, Ishiki and I've forgotten what Pigtails girl's name? Uh, Nene. 
Okay. You know, okay. Tony. I thought... Despite I thought the fact that her backstory changed right. since it was introduced? I thought this chapter was fine, honestly. Uh, I mean, Kinokuni's flashback felt a little incomplete back then, uh, uh, I felt, uh, when we first got introduced to her. And s spreading the payoff made her have a little more depth, so the contrast between her and Ishiki makes for a good c character dynamic. I also like the fact that, that they didn't just duel each other, um, <laughs> unlike Nova, uh, as the indirect confrontation of ideals kind of shook things up to me. But... Nevertheless, I'm just extremely disinterested in Food Wars right now, so, so, so I can't really enjoy it. Yeah, Wait, I'm I like, no, that... what did I want? Uh, I, th I think you, you wanted them to have, a, uh, to have a duel with each other, Kinokuni and Ishiki. Not really, I just kind of wanted more, like... Like, some form of interaction beyond this, because I didn't mind that they weren't dueling each other, I, but I did just sort of mind the fact that, like, the relationship that they had in this rivalry, like, you know, seen through other people. Yeah. Okay. And, well, I can agree with and, that. And also, yeah, I'll go first. I'll also okay. say that it seems like they switched <laughs> what Kino Kuni was like. For the sake of this flashback, since exactly. earlier they were so committed to doing everything, everything correctly, and here they say that she took enjoyment to it, and that's what what in part it, well, that's what kind of gave motivation to to cast no to cast. Why the hell can I not remember this guy's name all of a sudden? Naked apron guy. Yeah, naked apron guy. I mean, I didn't get any of that impression last time. In fact, I got the opposite impression. Yeah. Yeah, no, they've changed the backstory between flashbacks. Also, can we appreciate how sort of terrible a motivation this is? The idea of it's like, I, who was perfect at everything, um, saw you struggling. It made me feel better about me because I didn't have to struggle. Thank you, third world person, for making me feel better about my life in my lovely first world, first world home. No, no, I don't want, but really see that, that part in it at all. It was just a really weird motivation of like, wait, I'm I naked apron guy has had everything handed to him in a place he doesn't have to try, and yet he's the one we're meant to be backing here. I just think this is a weird time to push this forward, and that it it really does feel like the manga is so aware that Ashiki has no chance of winning. <laughs> but not even trying to build up a rivalry between Ishiki and Tsukasa. Yeah, and you know what? This would have worked a lot better if we got this flashback during his first match when he did win and when Nene was also in the cards, even if they weren't fighting one another. Yeah. Yeah. And this I just time, realized this what a build a, a rivalry be between him and Tsukasa, or, or I guess just him trying to win would be nice. Also... But, uh, horrible horrible win record ashiki has he's lost to this guy and he the only match he really won is the dude who was really good at pepper <laughs> like that is a that's a well, shitty, I mean, shitty those shitty are his only record. two matches ever so sad yeah 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 food was the moment i i don't know it's i don't i i, I think the series feels like itself that it knows it's a it needs to keep in like it needs to finish this long arc, but do it really quickly and really engagingly. Otherwise, it's going to get cancelled, and it's failing to do everything at the moment. Also, as a last note, the final two-page spread is kind of funny to me, just because it reminds me of well, Fire Emblem Heroes has those seasonal units that always fight with stuff like Christmas trees, fans <laughs> throwing mochi at their opponent, or hitting them with a sack of gifts. This just reminds me of like one dude in armor and other just hits him with a fan to crack the armor. It's still somehow just as effective. My favorite one were, were all those joke weapons you could give people. And like half of them would be like they blow off their clothes and get a crit or something. But oh, I love that was such a good dumb part of those games. Yeah. So shall we move on to the Mario uh, Academia? So, should we do my Academia? 
Yeah, yeah. I'll ju- yeah, I'll just said it. Uh, all right then. So My Hero Academia chapter 169. Surprisingly, not much 69 in this chapter of My Hero Academia. But we do have a, culture, a cultural f- uh, festival of darkness, which I do love. <laughs> the <Bank of> darkness. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. All right. You so, can so, tell. Yes, you I, can I am just going to say right now the gate. I completely adored this chapter. Favorite chapter of the week, and maybe even favorite chapter of the series in a while. Wow. Yeah. Really, yeah. it was very much filler for me. I, that's what I like about it. I like when well, I mean, does Hiroaka is filler. really damn good with filler. Remember the room competition? Uh, I, do, I, I do, I do like the filler. Uh, although th- this just seemed kind of very generic to me uh, for my hero. Uh, the, the room thing, the room thing was a lot better. But yeah, uh, th- this is fine. This is fine. Just, just, a, just a bit generic. Oh, I, think, we're, I don't know. We're gonna, just, we're gonna think, organize oh, a r- rock concert, and the prom is tomorrow. Uh, but I just yeah. find these characters really inherently charming, and like it's, it feels like it's been so long since we've been able to. <laughs> What? I, ju- I just find uh, these characters extremely charming, and uh, we're at the page with Mineta uh, okay. off- uh, offering to uh, to do a strip club uh, for the cultural festival. But like, I just it feels like so yeah, long. For, since in my we... version, it was Diddy Bar. Diddy Bar, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Him aside, like, I just feel like it's, it's been so. <laughs> it's been so long since we've had a chance to like hang out with all of them and just spend time, and I just even if it's just generic fillery stuff. I love giving chari- more characters the spotlight, and I think I, l- I love that like uh, they're bringing back Mina's dance thing. I like them trying. I like all the silly suggestions the class comes up with. I love Ida and Yayorozu struggling to manage the whole thing. Uh, I think like pe- I think the uh, Kaminari and um, oh, I've forgotten what the diamond guy is uh, name is. Uh, it's uh, it's Koda. Koda like encouraging. Um, sh- God damn uh, it! But names are escaping me. In- incur- yeah. it- <sighs> you know, Jiro. Encu- Jiro. Jiro. There we Jiro. go. Encouraging Jiro. I thought that was really adorable. Um, I don't know. I- this is just like, I liked the last arc, but I don't think there was any moments when I was really super into it. And this for me is just what I've been missing from the series for so long. Just spending time with these other characters. I've got um, to say, I've got to say Grail yeah. in in that panel when uh, when Koda's encouraging Jiro. I I, I was just. Wait, what is Asriel doing in this series? You were? He kind of looks like Asriel, doesn't he? Well, if I look from afar and squint a little, then maybe a little bit. Otherwise, I just can't really see it. Mm, I think He's maybe... way too bulky, and that head's way too large for Asriel with the whole ridge at the top. Yeah, but if, if we see just the head, and if it's in white... It might just be partially because I've been watching a lot of, like slice of life anime recently where they just do loads of like mundane stuff like this and i do just really i've kind of grown to like that we've just seen the Gil- guilty crown episode when they do the school festival in the middle of the quarantine oh, fuck that <laughs> fuck that oh, oh, no. the very best one so i i yeah, honestly the, the school festival in the middle of the totalitarian regime killing people i know what we need a school know, fucking festival i know i'd be the only person who'd like this but i honestly wouldn't <laughs> mind if my hero academia just turned into a slice of life series showing the, the everyday goings on of the ua class oh no it, that's just me <laughs> it would it would be fine it would be absolutely fine i, I and i get that we have to we have to have this chapter um, um it, it, it's just just the premise is a little generic to me but i can with i can live with that absolutely yeah, and you know, for I... me, yeah, for me, it's the small elements in the background that really show me the character development that's taking place here that you wouldn't notice unless you've been reading for it for a while and were paying attention. Like when Ashino's teaching dancing, it's like Midoriya and uh, Aoyama, yeah, Aoyama who are doing it. Like their friendship may be a little bit stronger as it was stated just now. And it was Koda that was in the background really looking at at Jiro when when she was having some trouble with the whole I don't want to do music stuff. Plus the to- the fact that that Kirishima is the one who thinks is this all all right to do while there are villains out there that are kind of active against us, and the fact that Todoroki was the one to really suggest the whole let's do this thing that makes everyone happy. Yeah, Even just his expression was the kind that seems like it's changed a little. Yeah, uh, it was a very nice 
like chapter to see people's like character growth and I'm 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 interested in Jiro as a character. I'm looking forward to see where this goes. Um, also, the sugar man's imagination of what kind of training class are you taking is pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think my favorite one was reading the board and f trying to figure out what everyone went for because it was <laughs> because like, yeah just like um, just Ida going with stuff had to be removed. Why why yeah. did you remove the banquet of darkness? Why? No, my favorite one was Yamirozu study session because we've shown before that that's the only way she's ever interacted with friends before, and she, oh, so, so it's just really oh, sad. Me. Then there's also oh, Bakugo's no. death match. <laughs> I love the, the I love the call back later the that he time. knew it wasn't going to be answered. Yeah. He um, he knew it wasn't going to be chosen. He just he's just got he's just like, eh, I, a boy can dream. Oh, I would have loved the frog song chorus. Yeah, guess who that one was? I love that the, the, the they're all written in comic mask. songs. <laughs> yeah, Yorozu is such a neat writer that she just does comic <laughs> sounds, like obviously. Oh, really hoping that we were going to go with the Banquet of Darkness, so that we could finally have the Danganronpa My Hero Academia crossover that we've always wanted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do, you're, you're hoping they in my Gundam Tanaka. I mean, Tokiyami is literally just what? Gundam Tanaka in MHA, which is why he's they, like they do not need character. to invite Gundam Tanaka because it is already established that he is always invited everywhere that he goes. Except that you know you're wrong here because Gundam would be doing his own exhibit of the the mystical beasts of the Nether World, uh, aka um, a petting zoo. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what um what the rest of these uh do at the uh, at the school festival. I want to see like what a super superb uh, school school festivals like. Well, one thing's for certain, uh, judging from the last chapter, Aoyama isn't going to be leashed. Speaking of which, <laughs> shall we move on to Black Clover? Yeah, sure. So right, we missed last week's chapter, and apparently. Uh, while we're not done with uh, with Astus plot, uh, we move we move over to um, we move over to Gau Gauche's bunch to to, to Gauche, Gray, and uh, Golden, and now and now suddenly we cut to oh, we cut to I forget how it happened uh, exactly last week, but now we cut to William Vengeance apparently sharing a body with Licht. The, the guy who looks exactly like Leash, surprisingly, has a link to Leash. That's crazy. Yeah, so I know, I do man. Admit, yeah, like, I do admit they did pull a bit of a fast one. This earlier, they did have him both remove his mask to show that underneath he's not leashed, and Yami said that their signature is different, their aura or key or whatever is different. So it kind of did yeah. alleviate that th thought that they're the both the same guy. Oh, maybe they're not. Oh, they are. It's just a little more complex. Yeah, it, for Black Clover, it was not a bad twist. It was, it was still not a great twist because it was essentially just like, so you just you oh we you went and questioned him, found out he wasn't leashed, and then we just left him being really really creepy when we got told earlier. Like our first introduction to the Golden Dawn was them being creepy in, in like a cutaway shot. It's just like, you, dude, you told us this guild was evil. Trying to tell us that their evil-looking captain, who's called William Vengeance, and who looks exactly like the main villain, isn't the villain. I've still got questions I want answered. I mean, he isn't the villain. He's just sharing body with the villain, and seems to care for the villain. The and villain's he also roommate. cares for the Magic Emperor, so he figures, like, I don't want to go against either of you, so you guys figure it out. Kill yourself, so, you gotta. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to make decisions, so I give it to other people. I, that, that, it, can I, I ask? Can I ask something? Paying enough really attention people... to know whether this is a good re reveal. So, has has it actually been al alluded to? Uh, no. It was like literally we saw. Yeah, we saw he didn't. He had took his helmet off. We saw he had scars, and now we find out he's sharing a body with Leashed. Okay. So it's not. It like it's come out of. It, it's just been revealed here. Like there was no real build up to it, but it works fine. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we've we've had uh, we we've had Yami suspect something, but I forget what what it was exactly. He's 
So he expected was that underneath that mask, that William was was Lee. Moved the mask and saw that no, that it's not Lee. Guarding which Lee really doesn't have. It, can I just clarify something really quick? Yeah, sure, right. <clears throat> Magic Knight Squadron isn't a part of the Eye of the Midnight Sun at this point, because the amount of spa to have here is like borderline hilarious. Yeah. Not only is the captain of the Golden Dawn secretly their leader. Not only did they apparently brainwash the vice captain of the Golden Dawn as well, but we still don't know who Raya was impersonating, because that was still a thing that he was impersonating one of the captains. <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it the wasn't it the like Fat Mayor? No, it wasn't, because that was afterwards. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake, I, don't, okay, I, I did not know that. Know that. I think you've already told us once uh, that, that, he, uh, that there was a guy who impersonated someone, and I've completely forgotten about that. Yeah, it, it I forgot like that Dora. there was someone being impersonated. No, no, no. no can we also talk that this fight that takes place is really with no real, like, meaning to it? Leet has lost already to Yami. Yeah. So why do we think that he'd be any threat to the Wizard King? Like if because because if, if he, he loses a, here, there is no plot. Yeah. yeah. Only meta reasons make him intimidating to the point where it's like, if he's actually going to turn up and be leashed again, then we have no plot in Black Clover. Like I'm not ruling it out. Black Clover could do it again. It's like, oh look, the good guys win the win the day because the villains were no threat whatsoever. But. This was an intro. I thought this was an okay fight for Black Clover. It yeah. would have been if not for the fact that Leash has already lost to Yami. So I've got no reason to believe he'd be a threat against the Wizard King. Oh, if no, this was his still first win. appearance, then I would get this. I think if they were playing it if, as him as an underdog villain using underhanded tactics yeah. to get him away, that could work. Yeah, like, but, like a Loki type. Yeah. Villain, right. Yeah, except now he's just come out like. It's me. I'm gonna fight you now. Rather than get close as William and then switch over and stab him in the back. Hmm. Like, that would work if he used that to get a the hit on Wizard King so he has to fight while wounded. Yeah. It reminds me of the Orochimaru versus Third Hokage fight. Where Orochimaru not only traps him, imprisons him, and then brings reinforcements because he can't take him one-on-one, -on -one, but then also nearly dies. It's just like, that's what this fight would, would, would be if it was done well. Every Black yeah. Clover yeah, also, fight, also though, it's, it's of, every single... It reminds me of that. It's that every single time there will be two characters fighting and it'll look like the villain might have the upper hand. After every single time it shows that the, no matter what, the good guy is going to get the upper hand on the situation somehow. Yeah, and yeah, while I'm not necessarily... Bullshit. And well, I'm not necessarily sure if it's as exhausting in the Tankuban as it is here. It is exhausting here. Because it, and look, I I do enjoy Black Clover sometimes, and I understand the arguments that people give as to why it can be a very enjoyable series. And this feels extraordinarily patronizing to the audience, as if they can't take like, the heroes looking like they're going to lose for one minute, so they have to instantly show, like, no, 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 everything's going to be okay, see? The Wizard King is still stronger. See? Asta's still not going to give up. See? Yami just cut that guy in half. This is something it like, does so much as well. Uh, like, I, I can remember there being so many chapters that ended like this, like, could have shown off how strong the villain was, but instead ended on, like, Asta going, yeah, we can do it. Yeah. And blocking him. And I know like, the only way that they could now have any threat on Leaf was that he ha still has that third eye release thing that he tried last time, but they figured, no, you can't do it here, we leave. Yeah. Third eye, but I mean, not for nothing, we've seen how well that other third eye thing works with literally every other person <laughs> who's tried it, and they still get pants by the end of the chapter anyway. So, yeah. the only thing that can oppose time is light. So, what is the reasoning for this? Because light's really... Um, light is a constant. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay, if you guys say so. Rock beats 
paper. I'm gonna make a prediction. I, gotta, because... I can't even do rock, paper, scissors right. <sighs> Here's what's gonna happen, you see. May be able to defeat because, some because light blast. With a very sharp rock, right? Yeah, yeah. Flint. Time can stop some light blasts, but there's no way it can possibly stop a really big light blast. <laughs> and he is what's gonna happen. Since that wizard no. is like, holy shit, there are so many light arrows everywhere. What can I even do? You know, I would. No, no, that is probably what's gonna happen. That sounds exactly like Arrow, that's what's gonna happen. Gonna happen. Though, yeah. I do it. I was gonna say, I do admit that Wizard King's plan of the two magic, these two magic stones stay with me. Because, well, I'm the strongest around, so if they're with me, no one can really take them from me. I mean, give it to your very strongest guy who is you, so you can trust you. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. So, one no, could no. ask why he doesn't just keep all of them, but I guess even he wants to have some backup. Like, in case someone manages to sneak up on him, he still has some something to fall back on. In case someone well, it's, him it's so they don't realize that he's the true villain and isn't just hoarding power, obviously. Come on, guys. I mean, he's then why would Black Wolf have one of the ge gems? So... But, but guys, he can't, he can't lose here, because he's Asta's rival. So he has to stay okay, so he'll <laughs> be an inspiration to Asta. Uh, what rank rival was he again? I think he was, like, rank 3. Uh... This there's there's you know, series. then there's everyone else. I think is <laughs> literally everyone else in the entire world. So I've got some yeah. problems with the things said in this chapter, but but I'm 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 not I'm not sure whether I'm just analyzing them in a vacuum, uh, or whether they do actually make sense uh, in the context of the series. So okay. the, the thing about the sins of the Clover Kingdom's people. Uh, uh, seem seem like a seem like really just empty words. I I don't think we've been given enough of a backstory for for this setting to have any moral ambiguity about the Clover Kingdom. I mean, it it feels like yeah, it's trying to be yeah. deep, but but it doesn't know how. Um, it's also, like... every time Leash has brought up how the the sins of the Clover Kingdom, he sounded more like any child that didn't get his way. So I'm pretty sure it's been implied there has been a genocide, but the way it's been brought up, it just sounds like the leash is whining. Yeah. Or it's more like, you took the job that was meant for me, or you stole my girlfriend. It's never yeah, really pretty... felt like... And also, we get nothing personal on this because we don't know who exactly orchestrated that whole genocide thing. Like, no. was it the Wizard King? Yeah. Was it some fa faction within the kingdom? Who? Also, we got no context for his rage. Reading through this n now for me, uh, rereading through it, Leash does not help at all by the fact that I've just got off reading a bunch of Berserk, which has a much better white-haired imposing villain. Um, I, I I really hope what it turns out being is just Leash wanted to start his own country. With blackjack and hookers? <laughs> no, but exactly. But the Wizard King like patented the name Clover Kingdom first. He's like, fuck. <laughs> well, it'd be the Those heart are kingdom. the scenes of the Clover so Kingdom's lame. people. Yeah. Sounds Basic so copyright. Oh. Oh, also, we we have kind of a theme of this battle introduced kind of, uh, kind of nowhere uh, when uh, when the Wizard King. Um, says that he wishes for a future i i've had a dream a future in which there is no discrimination among people uh, so, so uh, i i don't exactly get why that's his motivation and why he's selling le least of all people this why are you he telling your enemy like... your go i i guess i get that it's a shown in moment but what reason is there for it well, None. they're pretty it's good. Just empty platitudes, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Friends at this point. I mean, it's you know they they're buddies, and they're just like you know what I'm just. <laughs> you know, I just I just feel like I can open up around you, guy who's trying to murder my face in with light magic. You know, we're friends, right? I feel like I can open up around you, guy who's trying to open me up. <laughs> Create a beautiful kingdom. 
where people, people of different races, the nobles, the poor, the people who are trying to murder all of us can just live together in a really lovely coexisted place. Um, you know, I, I really don't mind the fact that you ordered uh, really a mass killing of our entire kingdom because a lot of people died in that zombie attack. But, you know, I love, I love how the zombie attack was treated as such a big thing. And then we just had the same guy attack the Black Bull's headquarters and got clowned with all of his friends. So, Can we just move on and talk about something good? Yeah, let's talk, yeah, sure. let's about talk next about... up. We never learn. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought the next hey, one was Thomas Neverland. This has been joining goofy Neverland. chapter today. Chapter seventy-three: Uprising. Uprising. Hmm. Oh, I wonder what that reminds me of. Hmm. Oh. Do you hear the people sing? Singing the song of angry men. It is the music of the people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of your heart. Once again, I'm conflicted about this chapter. You are? Because I loved it. I... Um, that, was pretty, that was pretty good. I liked a few... Uh, I really liked the few things about it too, but there are just plenty of... Kaiushiraisms that have been annoying me about his writing uh, ever since the forest arc. Like, okay, fake out af after fake out, uh, we uh, lose a few pages uh, for for that um, uh, for the drawer thing. Uh, we uh, we get a lot of information that the focus character know, but we don't. So we do get some info like a new goal and uh, Lucas lying to the Goldie uh, Pond kid. So so I guess that's something. But but it's just it's just like with the book uh, that the the kids uh, had all these all this information, but uh, we weren't allowed as readers to to, to know it. Actually, you have to go. Turns out. So uh, yeah, I gotta have, but have a have a good time, guys. All, all right. right. See you never. Yep. See ya. Sure. So, so yeah, th th that's the only thing that, that bothers me th about this. But, uh, well, yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, thing, th I mean, that th things should get more interesting uh, now it's, that now it's all that the you... info here. Wow, this is so interesting. It turns everything on its head. This would be such an intriguing thing if someone were to be reading it. <laughs> but I'm not gonna explain any of it. That is kind of annoying. Yeah. But otherwise. I liked this and the last chapter since it's also kind of giving the gray morality to to the humans trying to help them versus humans trying to stop them because well if these guys do go across they will break the promise and probably bring about another war. Okay. So is it for them to just there and sacrifice themselves for the greater good or should they be allowed to pursue their own freedom at the Probably a huge cost to everyone else. Are you talking about the William Minerva message? Because th that was last chapter. That too. And the... Was it... What's his name? Peter Pietra or... Uh, no, Rat Peter Rotry. Rotry, yeah. I... I mean, things g should get more interesting now that uh, we have jacked up Norman uh, entering the plot. <laughs> it's actually the Frankenstein's... Monster You're sure that's Norman? Norman. <laughs> Well, it, well, it, it is uh, it is his name, and uh, for some reason, Caster is now muted. Um, maybe they're outside. Okay. Um. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, what did you think about the the weird kids utter uttering uh, uttering Norman's name? Uh, interested to see where that goes. Me too. I was not willing to make any judgments yet, though so I did have some theories on it. Yeah? One of them was some kind of mutant, but I just didn't think it was that simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other one? What other one? The other theory? I oh, know, you, you just had one theory. Yeah, like, that this is some kind of of clone, or that he's from they took all that Norman's still alive because they never showed a body. I mean, if it were a clone, it it, it would kind of, it would kind of 
uh, it would be ev even more like uh, Kazuo Ishiguro, but, but yeah, it, it would kind of make the human farms obsolete uh, if you can make just um, clones of them. Yeah, now. but that's why I thought it might have something to do with the Project Lam Lambda 7214, which is some kind of experimental new trial plantation. Okay. And they did not it didn't look like they had all the info on what that plantation actually make what makes it special it, so i thought it had some connection to that trial plantation that for of which we really know nothing about it just amuses me uh, the idea that uh, that now that um, astro loss in space is gone uh, now uh, kaioshiro i think uh, oh yeah now i can introduce clones into the story yeah, though, seeing as I have read the next chapter, I do know the answer. I'm just not going to spoil it. Okay, then. Um, so, what? another thing I, d I didn't like particularly about this chapter is that uh, uh, we get a bunch of generic lines for, for, from uh, from these interesting Posca Demizu's character designs that I'm struggling to call characters because Kaioshirai can't uh, build a supporting cast no matter whether kids or adults. Um, I would like to get into those. I um, I don't even think I find Lucas interesting for now. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I think so far he served his purpose in the story fine. Um, but I I don't really have too much issue with him. Yeah, I don't really think he's or anything. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I, I just, I just, I just miss entertaining characters like Roan or Don. Yeah. So, uh, shall we? No, move one on? question. Do you think that the Adam kid is some kind of spy inserted into their midst? Because none of them know where he's from. Could be a route they take with it, like perhaps when they're breaking out, he lets he something lets them know or something. Um, or they just have a tracker on him, so maybe. So shall we move on to We Never Learn? It's a shame Nova isn't here to uh, discuss this turd of a chapter. This chapter is hot garbage, but. But, but it has a few cool gags, actually. It, it has a few gags I really like, but it does tie in with my massive problems with the way Kirisu is written. Yeah. So, so, so uh, even so, how did we get, uh, get not one, but two topless chapters in a row? Uh, what is going on with this manga? It's next, uh, uh, next week uh, just going to be Takamoto losing her bikini top, where, which I know Milo would be very happy about, but still... Uh, th then finally, we, uh, we d okay, we, we still had a legal lolly, but oh, now finally Jenner, we had a Firmino, no uh, just no one cares about. Yeah. Jenner, I'm going to let you in a little secret. See, I have found this strange theory that I think may hold some credit as to answer your questions. You see, it starts with the fact that this is a magazine primarily read by boys between the ages of 13 and 15. Oh, and boys at that see. age are really getting into liking boobs. Therefore, oh, they figure that by inserting a it. lot of boobs, they can sell the magazine a lot more and be popular. Now, I know it's know. kind of making a few assumptions um, that might be hard to grasp for some okay. people, but I think it's a valid idea at least. Yeah, no, I, I think you're hitting on something. I think we've also missed the point that this is a ecchi harem manga. So, now, right, now, yeah, that would make or, sense. Uh, I think I yeah, say, uh, there has been some pattern that most edgy hair manga do have a larger amount of breasts. Yeah, this is, it's a tame harem manga, but it's not a harem manga sold in romance. It's a harem manga sold in comedy and boobs. I will, okay, I will say there are two gags in this chapter I really, really like. The first is... The way that she loses her bikini top is so ridiculously contrived and silly that I can't help but love it. And oh, you mean the crab? Yeah, just the crab. Pops. I was like, oh no, my swimsuit, the wind and the waves. <laughs> and then the other one is just at the end where just like Louis Uyghur used lost two decades of his life from her trying to drive him back. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> I like another one that, that he just suggests that that they uh, they uh, join to the uh, join the barbecue and eat lots of meat because it's poor. 
Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and also, way, I do kind of uh, like I that. I do like that that we get to see Hoven's waifu. Barbecue chat. <laughs> hey. Ah, uh, golden oldie, that one. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, the I just find it kind of funny that the crab that takes off Curious's bra goes like, All right! Like, it planned that. And then the sea cucumber yeah. she slips on is going like, Hee hee! <laughs> like, it too was in on this, like... Yeah. The, and now the, the dolphin last chapter, wildlife here is kind of pervy. Also, yeah. But Jesus, like, the... the... Th though I actually think... The panel I actually think where the, they show the... her stepping on the sea cucumber, the position they show the sea cucumber at is questionable. Yeah. Why is it inside her? <laughs> yeah, no, I the moment I saw the sea cucumber, the moment I saw the sea cucumber, the sea cucumber, it's meant to be underneath her. Like fluff in her cleavage. Uh, like, but no. To this chapter's credit, I did enjoy how we very quickly switched from "Oh, Yuiga's gonna have to be the big man again and help," to "Oh no, Yuiga's glasses are broken." The... Caster, uh, I'm I'm just I'm just flabbergasted that that we had two same chapters in a, a row. It's it's like it's like when uh, we no, had to, those two chapters, Mario Leona, uh, Mario Leona, Mary um, Leona, uh, just punching liar in the face. Yeah. Also, can I? I just need to point out first of all, so much. I like the fan service yeah. in the series. But I do admit that last one was that day, in exchange for part of my lifespan, yeah. I got a brand new shirt and glasses. Like, it's some eldritch deal. Yeah. Okay. The thing is, with this series, I like it when the fan service is just ridiculously immature and comical about it. Like, in fact, like, the Ogata chapter about the cup sizes, there isn't actually any actual fan service. It's just immature yeah. jokes. Yeah, that's right. Whereas this just feels like it's it's trying to feed the doujinshi like material yeah. and just the recurring thing of the way that it's like oh kirisu's a teacher but we're gonna infantilize her by showing her in a school uniform and in like a school uh, swimsuit is just really creepy and it's it feels really skeevy to me i i never really understood uh, why the school it, swimsuit it's just uh, what kids are into um, is in any case in any way titillating it's not very hot <laughs> Uh, I mean, Japan it's not really aimed at you. Yeah, it's aimed at Japan. Yeah. Yeah. It's Japan. Third so weird shit. So, shall we move on to Dr. Stone, 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 Yeah? First of all, that's my thing. You can't do that. I've copyrighted it. Second, Dr. Stone, 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 Dr. Stone. Thirdly, you already have to sue Nova for doing it, so yeah. More like Dr. Incest. I already have. There is so much incest in this chapter. Ah! Grail, Grail, you. Funny last week, we actually have to talk about it this week because they have confirmed. How about you, Dr. Incest? How bullshit this is. I mean, it seems that she went to. I'll shut up if you shut up. It seems no, that no, Shueisha wasn't This is a serious a thing to talk people. about. Come on, guys. It seems like Shueisha wasn't very big on incels themselves, since now they're establishing Senku's adopted, and he and Byakuya are kind of too similar for him to be adopted. Uh, am yeah. I right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't think this was intended from, from the get-go. Yeah, I do think that they might have thought, like, we don't want the, the Kohaku slash Seku shippers to be discouraged, so we're just gonna it, say uh, he's adopted it's now. It's already so, fu so screwed up, though, because I guess even if we're going on that logic, if if they were that many generations, eventually the gene pool would be widened out enough for it to no. really matter. No, no. If you are starting with six people, there is no way the gene pool can widen, unless other people came back alive, which they don't mention. There is no way this gene pool can be won. The gene pool for 3,700 years has been six, chrome, six um, sets of DNA strong. There should Every person in this clan should have an IQ of single digits and about seven fingers on each hand. Also, also uh, Chrome, Chrome and Ruri um, are now also an incestuous relationship. So have fun shipping that. Oh, no. <laughs> Technically, three thousand seven hundred years. If you, 
ignore the fact that it starts off with six pe uh, six people, which this the, which the series kind of does. It will not matter by now. They are dating within like a small town. Um, but yeah, it's the fact that they don't want to mention it's six people, and the fact that how the fuck did you manage to actually have a survival human gene pool? Yeah, that's something that even I had to like tilt my head at. Yeah. Even while I am the founder of the first Church of Doctor Stone, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but can we talk about aspects of this chapter other than that? Yeah, other than sure. Incest? Yeah, but there were there were interesting bits as well. I enjoyed Biaki here in this. He set himself up as well as this as the, essentially the dead mentor character. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that Byakuya is kind of like the combination of the best aspects of both Taiju and Senku, though not to the same extreme as either of them. He's impulsive, but yeah, yeah. the kind of guy who's always throwing himself at the danger so others don't have to, but also he's going about it a lot smarter than Taiju would. He's mm. not. Uh, he's also yeah. not a normal. Uh, not a normal mental mental character since he kind of learns from his son uh, as opposed to vice versa. Uh, first, he in, uh, first. Oh, Senku I can consider it cyclic. First, Senku inspires him to um, to you know to, uh, to uh, become an astronaut. Then, uh, then he, uh, he actually uses the, the same methods that Senku does. Um, uh, in his, uh, you're cutting out a lot. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah, can, you hear, can you hear us? We can't really hear you. Okay. Uh, I can hear you. Um, I think they can hear you fine. It's just like, I'll, I'll keep an eye on like what the connection is, I think, like, pretty much. Okay. Um, in any case, it seems like um, uh, he's using the same methods um, of, you, you know, scientific things that uh, that, uh, that uh, Senku has been using. Uh, he even credit, credit, credits him at some point. Though I can't remember which page, but because uh, uh, the Shonen, Shonen Jump Free, but uh, wow, there is a lot of loading. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, it, Generally, it, it's fine when you're just reading through the chapter, but when you're trying to get to stuff quickly while you're also streaming, it's a bit of a hassle. Yeah. Though, yeah, it's really sweet how much Byakuya has learned from this kid, though. And, yeah, a great chapter, although I don't have much to say. Pretty much same. Yeah, and I do like how they go about intelligence. Like, they figure out the point of origin for that blast, figure out that if we go down, we might also turn to stone if it's radiation. So we're going to go three first, and we're going to aim at the opposite side of the world. It makes a lot of sense, and I... The, my only thing I'd like to have seen in this chapter them to give a bit more time between oh my god we're all going to su suffocate and hey I'm saving you in a row but it's an amazing moment but it's, it's what eight I'm going to okay die. now you're the one who's gutting out a lot okay no never, never mind then I enjoyed the chapter too okay though I do have to question one thing even if Yakuya found that rowboat. How did he exactly find the capsule with them out of the sea? I don't think he had any means of tracking it. I imagine they had basic GPS on the shuttle. Yeah, but did they bring that down too? If they didn't, they were idiots. I, I just assumed he, they, the shuttle had a tracker. This, um, well, the capsule had a tracker and the shuttle had a way to track it. I mean, they're, they're all idiots. Fuck astronauts, am I right? <laughs> uh, now I've alienated our... Um, well, the astronauts uh, are apparently fucking each astronauts. other. <laughs> Very wide. Just crazy two more points I want to touch on Yuri before... Garden, so, you know. uh, yeah. Well, two more points I want to touch on before we move on. Firstly, it seems that the singer lady might have had an abusive background that's shown in only one panel where you have to kind of gleam the details from yeah. just the visuals. What? What? It just seem a little bit bruised that there might be a bandage going from underneath her hair while you see an older man drinking in the background. Uh, I sort of more abusive, but I, I get what you mean. 
what, what yeah, it could be poverty, it could be abuse, but from that you can just kind of draw the conclusion yourself. And I like that it doesn't force it down your throat like, oh. she was beaten, feel bad. It just shows yeah, that um, it lets you make your own judgment on it. Yeah, the the bandage, the part of the note they give, they've given her is the general one they give like elementary school kids who they want to show a bit rough and tumble and run around a lot. It doesn't, it doesn't look like she's been beaten. And the second one is, if Senku and Byakuya aren't blood-related, how did he come to adopt Senku? Like, was it just an adoption of a single father? Because I'm not sure about Japan, but at least here you are not legally allowed to... Single people are not legally allowed to adopt, I think. And they have or, the same or maybe that... They have the um, same hand. Yeah. yeah. He, and he I was going to say, adopted. or was he maybe from the, like... The son of a woman also, he married, that and the son had been from a different marriage. Also, a Senku and Taiju related. Uh, I, Grail, I think the idea of a single father adopting just isn't as strange a thought oh, wait, an okay. idea as you think it might be. Oh, they're not brothers. Okay, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that. it's strange. I just don't know the legal system how adoption works in all the countries. Like oh, no. I just recall yeah. that it wasn't like legal here, but. I also might be mistaken because it's been quite a few years since I read law. It it seems perfectly understandable to me. Um, yeah, it might be just but, that, yeah, but I countries. do wonder if there is if it is just that simple that he just wanted a son but didn't want to settle down. All right, yeah, maybe. Then. Is that everything we've uh, we've got to mention about this? Pretty much? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Okay then. So, uh, looking forward to see, uh, I think I think uh, next chapter might be the end of the arc. So, yeah. In any case, yeah. let's uh, let's move on to Robot X Laser Beam, chapter 33. So, uh, just to briefly mention that. Uh, so, just last chapter, um, Ginro didn't seem to actually believe in R Robo, and now suddenly he does. So, I get that Robo is actually playing in a more unorthodox way now, um, uh, right at the end, which uh, which is, is kind of a nice tactic, and I can appreciate that. But uh, that's a pretty fast switch for, uh, for so someone, some rival, I guess, that we, we, was, we were supposed to think that uh, ah, uh, Robo is nothing compared to this guy. So, so um, it, it's... It's, it's kind of a similar thing to Asta, that people acknowledge him rather quickly. Um, it, and, and it doesn't feel that earned, I guess. Well, uh, in any case, Robo does win against uh, Dorian Green, uh, and uh, we, we, get a, we get a genuine smile from him, uh, which, uh, and it's uh, kind of adorably awkward, so um, I like that. We get another... Tournament introduced. Uh, apparently, um, have, um, Robo is now closer to mm, to actually competing with um, with, Yo with Yozan. Um, and yeah, I'm. I realize I'm getting more and more cynical over the course of this podcast. But uh, I j just read Haikyu. It, it's it's so much better. And it, yeah, and in. And as I've mentioned before, I've come to the conclusion that in, in general, if I like sports manga, I usually tend to like those that are more team based. Yeah, more team based, plays, uh, plays as a group. Yeah, so that's it from me. All right, and now that he's had his singular rant, can I briefly, and this is going to be a one off because generally not much happens chapter to chapter, just give my thoughts on where Hunter Hunter is? Absolutely. Because uh, that is back now. Uh, sure. Even uh, though I'm not going to care because, well, we know it's not going to stick around for long. <sighs> okay. But, 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 but before... Let's give Hogan this chance while it's still there. Yeah, exactly. I only get this once a year, okay? So, <laughs> basically, just where the series generally is right now, they are on a boat on an expedition to a brand new continent, um... There's a royal family on board this boat who are competing for the succession of the throne. Uh, there's also the mafia of the kingdom that they're from are also on this boat. Also, there's a bunch of assassins and a an assassination plot and a big mind game going on between them. 
also, each of the princes has their own, like... Because the power in the show is called Nen. They have, like, a Nen beast that awakens, and one of the main characters has to t train them each. Like, give them all equal share while also trying to work out who the assassin is. And it's, like, also, this espionage thing. But yeah, also, a bunch of other recurring characters we haven't seen in ages are on the boat. And it's just really cool. Um, and uh, half the time, I don't even know if, like all the information I'm being fed is going to add up in the end, but I don't care because I just love this whole setup and pr this weird setup and premise he's got um, so much. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to really enjoy this for the nine chapters that's in the magazine before it goes on hiatus again because he has a volume's worth. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just so long as you've made peace with that. Yeah, no, I, I fully... That, that That's what I expect every year and I'm never disappointed. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to uh, give you guys this uh, because I have uh, I have actually uh, a present for you two Brits. I wanted to give you this um, during the food wars recap because it's food related. Okay. It's a tr it's a traditional dish from Poland, uh, and an instant uh, an instant mushroom soup, oh. which. I can actually m uh, make now, uh, now that uh, you're going to talk about Boza Beat and Act Age, uh, which, uh, which, I, uh, which I couldn't read. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when I'm back, do you want to, do you want to, to have a taste and uh, do, uh, um, do a Food Wars reaction? Alright. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise I'll take my clothes off. In fact, I can promise I won't. But well, we'll we'll get banned from Twitch then. Yeah, maybe not that. But I will try my best to do an over-the-top reaction to that. All right then. So well, you uh, could just turn into a mermaid or turn into like some turn fairy into a people in a mushroom forest. <laughs> that would Great. work too, you know. Turn into a goomba. No, <laughs> no, this is food wars. And we're having a mushroom soup. We all know where the focus is going to be on the chart. Uh, oh, right, and and I do want uh, I do want Grail to uh, to describe it uh, the narration uh, what uh, what is um, what is the reaction going to be and you're going to pantomime it. Okay, that works. Right then. So, do I have to? Because any time they do food reaction now, I think that how delicious they skip, skip, skip. Yeah, All right. I don't read it. I don't read it either. I'm just like, and it's paragraphs and paragraphs, and I guess it means something in the food world. Oh, those are boobs. See, that is that is why I follow the anime because I actually pay attention to what the food is in the anime, whereas in the manga, I'm just <laughs> looking for what the plot is, what's going to happen next. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I should probably talk about the jump starts. Uh, we had Bo's Beats, which just wrapped up, which honestly, apart from the chapter where it briefly turned into Stardust Crusaders on the plane, I, or, or any JoJo's part, which is very fights-based, uh, it this series doesn't really do much for me. It's just kind of like Blue Exorcist again, uh, but with more technology-focused, I guess. The art looks pretty cool, but I don't really care for the panel layout, so it doesn't really stand out to me uh and yeah i'm sure like for like 13 year olds who haven't read many series like this this will be a good time but i'm probably not gonna pick it up either way um as for act age the weird thing is i actively kind of hate this series but if it gets picked up i'll probably keep reading it because it's so different to what we usually get in jump like it's a kind of a romance not really a ro like drama that could spin off into a romance focused around the acting industry just purely based on how different that is i do want to keep up with it if it does get picked up however this manga does not understand how acting works like it, it no nope. it like it thinks that method acting is a technique that is very basic acting and it tries to make out like she is something special and she almost has a disorder that is like going to cause loads of problems for her but like we never like it's not it's portrayed in such a cartoonish sort of silly exaggerated way um i'm more concerned about the way they mention how the acting industry is especially in japan for teenage girls can be really really creepy and then has the director abductor in a car yeah. for a joke. 
I mean, I can I don't, see, I, don't I, I, I could tones. very easily see this series go the direct the route of the director and her have a thing eventually, even though she's teen, you know, teenager. Yeah, that'd be creepy. Um, I, I, I hope it doesn't, but you know. Uh, and also just another thing I really don't like about this is the fact that oh, the director, he's like this. He's he's won so many accolades at all the world's movie festivals. He's one of the best in the whole country. And the only reason he's not well-known in Japan is that he's never prioritized fame until now. And that's so lame. Like, why can't he just be an up-and-coming director? Like, he's just trying to get started. Or maybe he's a director that's done lots of good things, but something has slipped about the way that he makes films. Like, something's gone a bit wrong, and it's just not going right for him. He's had loads of, loads of duds. Like, there's no underdog story here, because she's already, like, the Jesus-kun of quote-unquote method acting and he's the best director in the country who just hasn't had a, hasn't bothered to prove himself yet like ugh, there's no there's like no underdog story here at all um and yeah at the end of the lot at the end of chapter three they do kind of suggest that uh, yonagi like there is a downside to her quote-unquote method acting but like it's it's so um the downside is that a method actor has a hard time being a character that she doesn't know Sherlock. Yeah, she is that like she can't. Um, here, yeah. we, here we go. Let, let's let's just let yeah. it uh, let it uh, cool down. Cool down a little. Uh, um, where are you, Caster? Because I can't s seem to find you. I have found a place with both um, Wi-Fi. Okay. I'll find you guys up. So someone let you in? Uh, where, where shall I give uh, you your soup? I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys after the recording. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, yeah, the, the way that they show her acting has a downside is that she's supposed to be a background character in a scene where a child is being killed uh, in a samurai film, and she goes in and just kicks the actor before he can do it. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but all right. And it was, also, it was more like, the bit where it was like, my no, young child, let me teach you and teach you well. The, the script is your Biden. So to get this fucking child off of my set, who the fuck let her in? But yeah, it is just this weird situation of Bose Beats was a better jump start, but I'm probably going to read this one instead, just because it shows me something I haven't seen before. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of in the veins of Cross Account. It's it's yeah. it's bad, but it's it's like Cross Account versus Shudan. Like I'd rather keep reading Cross Account than Shudan because I want to see because Shudan's just kind of a run of the mill, cute jump se uh, like sports series, and then Cross Account is just this utter train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it fills a niche that doesn't really the magazine doesn't really have. Um, but yeah, uh, anyone read the new Blue Exorcist? No. No, catch, I'll just catch up again. I think I'm ahead of you, uh, even because I um, back when I read it, I haven't figured out how the um, how the how exactly the uh, ratio for scans to official release goes. Right. I mean, I think it's, so it's pretty. Because I, 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 it's a monthly series, mm -hmm. so there might not be as much delay. Um, I'll just say uh, it's with no specific spoilers. I love Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I, I guess it wouldn't be spoilers if you're already in the official release because it's kind yeah. of ahead. So, I so, mean, so, okay, so can, he's gotten can he's got okay he's gotten a power up which involves or just a change in appearance that also affects his personality in some way that makes his hair go white just like the main character in Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> um. It's kind of neat. But like, I, I, I like that. I hope this remains a permanent thing because that's kind of a neat thing. Like, oh, the protagonist's hair is a different color. That's new. <laughs> um, anyway, shall shall we do this food this food gasm? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh. Rail's gone. Rail's gone. He's not describing it. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I'm uh, gonna have to do it myself. Uh, uh, you trying to describe it, okay, uh, Caster? Shall you? Sure. Um, this mushroom soup feels like you're sitting in a um, in an onsen, um, water cascading down over you, hot towel on your head, monkeys watching you on the side. As uh, suddenly 
a giant mushroom falls on you from 3,000 feet and knocks into the water. Mushroom! Mush mushroom! <laughs> Okay, a giant mushroom falls on you and, uh, 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 and uh, suddenly ecstasy. Yeah. Now, I, mushroom. Uh, well, wouldn't you, when, uh, didn't, didn't you kind of base it, uh, base it on uh, Erinus' first reaction with, with the giant? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, like the, the fridge falling on her or whatever it was. Yeah. No, I, w I was going with the one where she's just like, oh, it's like a lovely hot spring with a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, that, that wraps up everything in Jump. Yeah, so uh, that is going to do it for this week of Samus Ream. Uh, thank you all for watching, either on my YouTube channel or live at twitch.tv slash Winsleydale Cheddar. Mm. Uh, we usually try to record uh, on Saturday, 10am um, um, Eastern Standard Time, 3pm uh, GMT, 4pm uh, GMT plus one, uh, and 5pm finish time, uh, d depending on when grail can record uh, so we might um every now and again we might try a different day um so you can follow us on twitter uh, me at winsley cheddar uh, for updates on the stream and caster's gone uh, for, <laughs> <laughs> for caster being gone but because he's not on twitter but, uh, because don't follow him but because he's not there and right. you can follow me at hoven with an h on twitter for cabal hijinks anime waifus and trial by guilty crown and Cabalcast, which is definitely coming, guys. Uh, well, Do you know the funniest thing is the Cabal isn't even a thing anymore? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, so, so there's no real hijinks uh, apart from... I mean, it's with former Cabal members, sure, but like so many of the group have left or just don't hang out with the, us when we meet up anymore that it's just not really a thing. I mean, I mean what, what was the group uh, supposed to be exactly anyway? <laughs> what did you do? It was literally, we were just a group within the Leeds University Anime Society who just it, the joke was we weren't a thing but we acted like we were a thing that was kind of it <laughs> okay. okay I'm I'm just right now I'm just uh, feeling uh, sorry for Asha who, who, who's reading a book with the line turned off so yeah, Jesus Christ I'm, I'm gonna turn the light on but in the meantime if, if you can hear me you can um, so, updates on the stream, Penganta, friendly faces everywhere, um, not a few reviews, well triggered, right, and, um, uh, oh, uh, on friendly f faces everywhere, I finished editing the season 20 analysis and interpretation and rant, basically, so it should be, um, it should be on YouTube in a while, I'm just uh, keeping it, um, as it is unlisted, uh, for, for the copyright bots, and uh, adjusted accordingly. Uh, and uh, speaking of trial by guilty crown, I think we have some recording to get to. Yeah, because uh, we're not going to spend just um, just uh, my London visit on that. Okay, so mm, so once again, cheers for watching, and we will see you next week. Take care. Oh, and you can follow Gra Grail Nine and at Nuclear Android. That, that, oh. uh, that's also a thing. All right. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Nuclear Android. That's it. Yeah. Blue! Blue!